Let's there be light for Mr. Chris Evans! Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the 10 times Chris Evans pissed off everyone. Okay, they want me to be, be do like a joke here or something, but I'm not really in a joking, <laughs> joking mood to be honest. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at the most annoying things the British radio DJ and TV presenter Chris Evans has ever done. Let us know in the comments what you think of him. TFI Friday Cancellation Dominating TV in the late 90s was TFI Friday, an inescapable giant helmed by Chris Evans and written by his closest friend, comedian Danny Baker. Let's see if this makes you cry. This is your dad, Des. Is that your dad? <laughs> <laughs> but its five-year control of the Friday Night Airwaves wasn't to last, and in the year 2000, Evans announced on air that the sixth series was to be the end. And number two are two men who look like they do the same job, but don't. Hi, I'm Terry, and I'm a waiter. <laughs> Hi, I'm Billy, and I'm a boxing referee. Yes! This meant the final series was hosted by various guest presenters. Despite getting enormous names on to present, including the Spice Girls and Elton John, the show continued to flounder. It didn't matter how much star power it had, it looked like Evans had gotten so bored, he couldn't even be bothered to work on the final series. I'm talking about the kind of making up that would break your legs. Okay. Sarah Kennedy. Apparently it's the coldest morning since breakfast shows began. And I'm late. In 2010, Terry Wogan left his breakfast show on Radio 2, leaving room for somebody else to take the reins. None other than Chris Evans. But while Wogan's departure was his own choice, whose choice was it that Sarah Kennedy's 6.30am show eventually got axed? For half an hour on mornings, Kennedy presented her own show, which led into Evans. Eventually, she left as well, leading to speculations that Evans had forced her out so that he could take her time slot. Although, she could also have been dropped because she kept talking about how great she thought Enoch Powell was. So who's to say? And the last word today, Enoch Powell, the best Prime Minister we probably never had. Politicians who complain about the media are like ship's captains who complain about the sea. Outrageous demands. The disc jockey Chris Evans is leaving Radio 1's popular breakfast show. He'd asked the BBC management to have every Friday off, but it refused and he resigned. Does Evans have the biggest ego in broadcasting? Possibly, as shown by his initial rise and fall in the 90s and 2000s. It looked, from the outside, as if Evans thought he was too big to fail, as he made increasingly absurd demands of the BBC while fronting Radio 1. He's been hailed by many, particularly himself, as the saviour of Radio 1. This included disappearing for a week because he wanted more time on holiday, leaving nobody to do his job and then changing the entire time slot to 7am because he couldn't be bothered to get up to start the show at 6.30. He even demanded to get double the amount of holiday of every other DJ on the station. He's criticised his boss on air, said most of his listeners are thick, made a tasteless joke about Holocaust victim Anne Frank, and only recently refused to do the Radio 1 roadshow. He quit when the BBC finally got sick of this. 17-hour pub crawl. During his tenure on Radio 1's prestigious breakfast show back in 1995, Evans was the architect behind this notorious incident. He took the entire crew of his show out on a pub crawl that lasted for 17 hours. While for many that sounds like a dream come true, the problem was that the crawl ended only two hours before the early morning show was due to start. Could you competently present a radio show when you were ten pints down? The BBC thought not, and famously fined Evans £7,000 for the event. We're sure £7,000 was nothing to Evans though, who's long been one of the richest stars in the country. Skiving. It wasn't just Radio 2 and Radio 1 where Evans had trouble, however. He also got into bother during his time at Virgin Radio as well, even though he was its key draw and was getting paid millions. You're doing the Virgin Breakfast Show! <laughs> <laughs> I am. Eventually though, he fell out with the management, which led to him being photographed out at a pub while allegedly off sick. Would you like to hold my Would you? Yes? 
Would you like to toot my horn? He was accompanied by Billy Piper at the time, the two of them being followed by the Paps the whole while. How many French yeah. pairs can fit in that car with John? It's no wonder he was eventually sacked from Virgin, something he unsuccessfully tried to sue them over. OFI Sunday. Okay, let's get on with the show! <laughs> Years on from the demise of TFI Friday, it was time for another big show for Evans, OFI Sunday on ITV. Unfortunately, where Friday lasted for six years, Sunday couldn't even manage six episodes. It was cancelled after just five. The public hated it, especially when Evans admitted in one show that they apparently hadn't booked anyone. Hi, honey. Hello, honey. How are you? Mwah. Mwah. Nice rooftop. The guest they did book didn't go down well either. He was joined for the first episode by Billy Piper, his ex-wife, before the dust had settled on their split. Should we relive the moment that we met? Oh, let's! Let's have a look at it, baby! Things weren't helped by the ongoing fuss over their age gap, with them getting married in Vegas when she was 18 and he was 35. It was at that exact moment that I knew we would meet, fall in love, get married and get divorced. Right! Famous and fearless. There were only half a dozen episodes of this ill-received game show, which ran for a week and saw a bunch of Z-list celebrities compete to win money for charity. Basically, I'm getting a bunch of celebs to attempt to do the most crazy and dangerous stunts we could think of live in front of the nation. They were competing in, as the show described it, extreme sports. What were those extreme sports? Skateboarding, driving a monster truck and learning to ride a motorbike. I'm a disc jockey. I ride I ride records, I don't ride bikes. While these are, technically, extreme sports, it didn't make for good viewing. Nearly all of the celebrities were unrecognisable, and the sports were dull and bland. When was the last time you were on a bike? Last time I was on a bike was about two years ago. Despite the show, at one point being Channel 4's answer to the cancellation of Big Brother, it was axed very quickly. Crying kids. Not once, but twice did this happen on TFI Friday, both as a result of staring competitions. Do you remember that moment? I don't want to remember it, I don't think. <laughs> yes, the humble staring contest that we all did in the playground at school proved to be a major magnet for controversy. Evans pit two children head to head in order to win a lavish prize for their parents. First, a new car, second, a speedboard. And in each case, the loser began to cry. It's okay to make grown ups cry, it's fine. <laughs> That's just something you have to prepare for when you're making any kind of game show where kids are competing. Listen, um, we've got a, uh, a, a, a holiday to Barbados for you and your family. And... <laughs> Evans did eventually apologise for the fiasco after getting them both onto the revival years later and giving them free Caribbean holidays. Stop, 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 stop. Of course we've got two holidays! <laughs> Jimmy Savile. The one-off documentary Sir Jimmy Savile as it happened was broadcast by the BBC in 2011. It was narrated entirely by Chris Evans, who paid tribute to Savile as one of his, quote, broadcasting heroes. Along with some other celebs, he went on at length to talk about what a good bloke Savile was and how much he did for charity. Well, we all know what happened the following year, as dozens upon dozens of abuse victims came forward about what had happened to them during their time with Savile back in his heyday. It's not Evan's fault, though there were rumours about Savile going back decades, but it certainly looks bad in hindsight. Top Gear Longtime car fan Evans was one of the presenters brought on to front Top Gear after the Clarkson Hammond May debacle that left them with no stars for one of their biggest shows. I'm happy. I am very happy. I'm in my happy place. You're in your happy place. However, Evans was far from a hit with the viewers. His jokes fell flat, he was unpopular, and at times it's claimed he had to beg the studio audience to laugh. The first series fronted by Chris Evans, and now we learn the only one he'll appear in. Eventually, co-host Matt LeBlanc supposedly gave the BBC the ultimatum that if Evans didn't leave, he would instead. And Evans decided to quit. Stepping down from Top Gear. Gave it my best shot, but sometimes that's not enough. LeBlanc left too, eventually, and it wouldn't be until Paddy McGuinness and Freddie Flintoff joined that Top Gear would start to recover. 
Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.